Yeah, um, so thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk now about my research. Um, the general, um, so the main contribution there is an open framework for multi source and cross domain personalization. And I'm going to uh, explain in a bit what that means. But first, I want to um, give just put your focus on one fact, which is the reason why I'm doing research on personalization in the first place. Personalization is such a popular feature that it has uh, become a commodity. So it's an expected feature of user-facing applications. And this is backed up by recent surveys. Um, three quarters of all users uh, prefer retailers to have personalization. On the flip side, 94% of all companies um, say that personalization is critical to their, to their business performance. Now, just a quick question. Is this loud enough for everybody to hear, or should I switch on the microphone? Just, OK. Yeah, it's fine, yeah? OK, so um, examples of personalization uh, that you might encounter in your everyday life is Amazon. Um, Amazon uses that for uh, e-commerce. Last.fm is for uh, music exploration. And Facebook is a social network that uses uh, personalization to filter out the posts that are most important to you. Now. Um, so it's a real um, hot topic. And the thing is that in the last few years, um, real-world recommender systems have changed considerably. And um, that's what motivates my research. So the change that has happened is on an architectural level. Um, and to explain that to you, I quickly need to give you an overview of the architecture of recommender systems. Now, in um, traditional recommender systems, uh, you have a closed architecture. So that's like what Amazon uses. Uh, you have the background data, that's about all the items in um, the inventory. That's all the books and music and whatever you have, but it's only those. And then you, you get the user preference data, and you use that to make your recommendations, right? Now, um, recommender systems such as the ones used by Facebook are different. They're based on a different architecture. And um, the main important thing there is they have an open inventory. So you see there, there's different external sources that feed into that recommender system. You can press the like button on external websites, and there's third-party services that interact with Facebook and um, save their user profile, uh, save your preferences on Facebook. So the data that is used to make the recommendations is aggregated from multiple sources. And um, now the main problem there is that all the infrastructure, all the algorithms that are currently used to provide such recommendations for um, open inventory recommender systems. Um, is proprietary and closed. And so my main research question there is how can you provide this capability without the closed and proprietary infrastructure? Now, I'm going to explain to you why cross-domain recommendation actually is so hard to do. Um, and, but on the same, hand, at the same time, you will see why it's important for this new kind of aggregated user profile data. Um, now, the one of the most important algorithms for recommendation today is called collaborative filtering. It uses, um, so you have, you have ratings, and so you have your users, and you have um, items where they can provide ratings for. And then this is used to predict the ratings of other users for items that they didn't consume, that they didn't see so far. Um, now, the thing is that um, if you aggregate your user profiles from multiple sources, then the user rating matrix will look like this. So, you know, you've got these users here, they provide you book ratings. And then you've got these users three and four that provide movie ratings. And then these guys here are only talking about travel. So there's no overlap between the domains. And that means in real terms of this algorithm that you can't use collaborative filtering to provide recommendations for uh, movies using book preferences. So what, change, what could change that is if you would have users that provide ratings from multiple domains. So that's, see here, these users there, one, two, and three, they overlap different domains. And um, that uh, kind of user profile um, data is actually pretty hard to get today. So the first research problem is how can we provide cross-domain recommendations without an overlap between domain rating data? And the second problem there is the cold start problem. As you can see here, there's a lot of gaps in that matrix. So one problem there is uh, rating sparsity. Um, and another problem is that if you get a new user that's completely new and he doesn't have any items um, rated, then how can you provide ratings for him as well? 
Now, um, at this point in time, after you've seen the general problem of cross-domain recommendation, uh, I just want to provide uh, the mo main important definitions that I'm going to use in my research. Um, so I'm going to use the same diagram there again. So the first one is the definition of a domain. What's important is that um, I'm using a set-based definition. So um, it's not like talking about the type of something. You know, we're talking about books or movies or something like that. It's a set. So this could be all the books that Amazon has right now, or it could be all the books that are on sale right now. You know, or it could be a subset of items that are sold by some other e-commerce retailer right now. So a domain then is any set of recommendable items, a set of users, and the preferences that the users have for the items. And then another concept that I'm going to use frequently is the source domain. That's where we start the recommendation. In this domain, we need preferences. So the source domain, uh, if we're talking about providing recommendations using from books, book preferences to movies, then books is the source domain. And then movies is the target domain. That's where we want to go to. And we, uh, we don't necessarily need recommendations in that. Uh, sorry, we don't necessarily need preferences in the target domain. Um, that's one of the other goals. Um, now, the cross-domain personalization task, as I use it in my research, is to provide uh, recommendations using preferences in the source domain for a different target domain. Uh, with the important thing there being that no overlap between the two domains is required. So there is no shared users and no shared items. Now you might be thinking, hey, there's another recommendation algorithm that is pretty well suited to what you're trying to do, uh, content-based filtering. So content-based filtering uses similarities between items. Um, let's have a quick look here. So let's say Metallica and Iron Maiden, right? That's both heavy metal, so they're pretty similar. And then you have Johnny Cash and Garth Brooks. They're also pretty similar, right? Because that's country. Now, so that's good, right? For the similarity, you can use features of the items. Um, could be anything in there, um, like uh, the genre or something like that, right? But the problem then is how do you, um, how do you talk about, the, how do you d uh, define similarity between items from different domains? So you have books there. And then how do you say Catch-22 is more similar to Johnny Cash than to Metallica? How do you do that? And um, so what you would need is some source of data that links items from different domains. And so that's a general requirement. And there's also a research question there. Um, because So content-based filtering doesn't use ratings. So we can add to that how can we do cross-domain recommendations without ratings in the target domain? just to um, define more clearly what kind of cross-domain recommendations we want to provide. OK, now, the thing is that um, linked open data um, can provide those links between the domains. And so that's why I propose to use with my approach. Um, now, the, there's three reasons why linked data can provide that. So the first one is it provides reusable concept identifiers from many different conceptual domains. So um, you all know the linked open data cloud, and in the middle there's DBpedia. And basically, um, it provides nucleus. So um, a lot of, uh, sorry, many, many different areas are covered by your eyes in DBpedia. So there's your books and music, all that. Um, and then secondly, cross-domain links are provided um, between items from those domains. So if you have some books and some music, there's not a void between them. There's more items covering that and links between them. And finally, um, this is uh, all standardized. So linked open data provides a standard for graph data that is interoperable. So that also um, makes it easier to share user preference data between um, personalized services. However, the research question is how can we use linked data for recommender systems? And um, so that's um, an, an open question before I did the research on that, basically. And um, I'm going to show you later how that, how, how that can be achieved. OK, now to wrap up the motivation, um, I'm just going to give you an overview then of my approach. Um, so my main contribution is an open framework for cross-domain personalization. And it has two parts. So first is the conceptual architecture that describes how recommender systems can use linked data. And then secondly, there's a cross-domain personalization approach that uses data provided by such applications, applications that implement the conceptual architecture. Um, and basically, in a nutshell, the personalization approach works like this. So you have user preferences that are expressed using 
DBpedia URIs. And then you have an algorithm that can use those preferences to find items from other target domains, such as travel destinations or movies, and then recommend those to the user. And so after presenting those two, uh, I'm going to um, wrap that up, so tie that together by talking about the prototype implementation that shows how this has been implemented for a real-world industry use case. Now, the first uh, contribution I want to talk about is the conceptual architecture for linked open data recommender systems. Now, um, there are several goals there. So the first one is to identify best practices, concrete best practices for uh, how to leverage linked data for recommender systems. Um, and this is provided by a list of the most common components that you can use to provide uh, high-level functionality for such systems. Um, the methodology of, the, of uh, that has led to this conceptual architecture has a very strong empirical grounding. So um, basically, um, first, I did, uh, we did a survey of 124 uh, RDF-based applications. They're from 2003 to 2009. They come from two um, important um, implementation challenges in the semantic web research community. Um, so, and then I used a question catalog, so 15 questions that range from um, the use of in, um, data sharing, linked data principles, inference, features like that. And I checked if the applications used those. Um, then the original authors were asked by email um, to verify or correct um, the, the assessment. And then um, we did an architecture analysis to identify the most common components among those surveyed applications. And then the last step was um, to extend this conceptual architecture for the um, components you definitely need for a recommender system as well, because most of the surveyed applications weren't uh, recommender systems. Now, the resulting uh, conceptual architecture is here. Um, there's four broad areas. So um, first, you have the user-facing components. Um, then they're in yellow. Then the business logic components, uh, they are in red. And then you have the RDF access components. They provide uh, indirect access to RDF data. And then you have RDF handling components down here in green, which are the ones that um, more directly deal with the data. Now, in order to um, have a recommender system that uses linked open data, uh, so first you need to look at the personalization component, right? So we need the cross-domain recommendation algorithm to be in there. Um, and then it's going to use the graph access layer uh, to have programmatic access to the RDF data model. Uh, alternatively, it could use a graph query language such as Sparkle. Um, then uh, the, the user preferences and the background data is going to be um, materialized in the RDF store. And the user profiles um, will be aggregated with the data discovery service and integrated with the data homogenization service. Um, yeah, and then basically when the personalization component has made its recommendations, you can use, um, pass those over to the user interface. Um, alternatively, if there's a lot of graph features in there, you can uh, use a graph-based navigation interface to provide something like faceted browsing. So um, using these components, um, you can enable um, recommender system to use linked open data to uh, um, aggregate and integrate user preferences described in RDF. So then, um, next part is I'm going to talk about the recommendation algorithm that is in the personalization component. Now, um, the recommendation algorithm that, sorry, the cross-domain personalization algorithm that um, I uh, present uh, in my thesis is called SEMSTIM. Uh, it extends spreading activation. Spreading activation um, is a graph algorithm. And um, so here the requirement is that we need to find, um, we need to start with items from the source domain. We need to find items from the target domain. And we need to do this on a semantic network. So what we're actually doing is a sort of graph search between the two domains, right? Um, now, as I said before, the two domains, that's basically just sets of items in this graph. And so you have uh, the user profile, 
um, and there's multiple items on there and you start the spray activation and it's an iterative algorithm uh, that will spread a certain amount of activation to the neighbors and then depending on different constraints they will get activated or not and those that become activated will spread their activation in the next iteration. And this continues um, until either the algorithm uh, basically runs out of steam or until um, a sufficient number of nodes from the target domain is activated. And um, so the extensions to SEMSTEM uh, which um, we introduce are that it adds targeted activation, so formal description of how to um, have targets, uh, sorry, for how to find the items from the target domain, and it adds constraints for the duration of the algorithm. So um, you can restart the algorithm if um, there is not enough activated nodes from the target domain. Now, um, as SEMSTEM is a cross-domain recommendation algorithm, and that's a novel um, presentation paradigm, uh, there were multiple objectives for the evaluation. So the first objective is, um, can SEMSTEM provide single domain recommendations in the first place? Is it able to do the single domain recommendation task which other um, recommendation algorithms are able to do? And the second one is, is it able to do cross-domain recommendations? Because that's our stated goal. And then um, the third uh, goal is, that the third ob objective is to uh, look how diverse are the recommendations of SEMSTEM because diversity is becoming a more important feature of recommendation algorithms. Uh, because users are getting tired of seeing recommendations where everything is very similar to each other. And then finally, um, the last objective is to look at the connection between accuracy and diversity in the recommendations. And in order to evaluate SEMSTEM, um, we compared it to the performance of several state-of-the-art algorithms. Uh, the first one here is KNN, K-Nearest Neighbor Collaborative Filtering, which is an older version of collaborative filtering. Um, and then the second one, the second collaborative filtering implementation is SVD++, which is a modern, more modern uh, implementation using matrix factorization. Uh, random selection is used as a random baseline. And then uh, I use two graph-based uh, algorithms, so linked data semantic distance, that's been developed here in Derry by Alexandre Passant a couple of years ago. And set-based breadth-first search, that's your standard breadth-first search, but you start with multiple nodes, not just one. And then I want to emphasize that the semantic network that we used here is uh, a very big one, large one, so it's the maximum subset of DBpedia, um, sorry, the subset of DBpedia which provides the maximum number of uh, edges. So that's 67 million edges and 11 million vertices. Um, yeah. So then for the first goal, uh, basically as a calibration experiment to see if uh, SEMSTEM is able to provide um, single domain recommendations in the first place, uh, we used MovieLens 100K data. That's a pretty standard um, data set in the recommender systems community. It, um, it pro it's just about user preferences with movie um, user profiles with movie preferences. The metrics then that we use are precision recall and F1 score. Uh, the experiment protocol that is used here is based on the top K recommendation task. The reason there is because SEMSTEM doesn't use ratings, we can't use a rating prediction task. And so we had to evaluate it for the top K recommendation task, which basically means every algorithm provides you with a list of up to 20 uh, recommendations. And um, then you check those recommendations with the test profile. And um, for the e experiment protocol from Cremonesi, what you then do is um, you look for the true positives in the data set. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to switch there to the results. Um, now, in this graph here, uh, you see the results for the F1 score, and the number of recommendations there goes up to 20. Um, so, and then here's the different algorithms, and what's important is that SEMSTEM um, dominates the performance of the other algorithms. The difference is statistically significant, uh, there's no overlap in the error bars, and um, yeah, so that shows that SEMSTEM has a comparable performance to state of the art recommendation algorithms on the top K prediction, uh, top K recommendation task. Now then for the second objective, um, we evaluated the cross-domain accuracy. For that, we had to use one of the few data sets that's available um, for, um, with multi-domain ratings. 
Uh, the one we used is the Amazon data set from the SNAP group, so that's the Stanford um, Network Analysis Group, and um, it contains ratings from four uh, domains. So that's music, DVDs, videos, and books. Um, and so we analyzed that data set and we looked for uh, users that have ratings in at least 20, sorry, that have at least 20 ratings in two domains. Um, now the interesting, the important thing about this data set is that actually 80% of the users only have ratings in one domain. So there is only a very limited number of users that are applicable to our experiment and we had to reduce that even further because we wanted them to have 20 items in both domains. It's kind of a standard number uh, size for user profiles. Um, again, we use precision, recall, and F1 score. Oh yeah, sorry. And so then the, the set, the pairing of domains that we then used for the experiment is um, music and DVDs because um, that ha had the um, lowest sparsity for the ratings. The experiment protocol is relatively simple. Um, you use items, uh, sorry, you use the one source domain to provide the training profile and the target domain to provide the test profile. Um, we determined for this experiment that the collaborative filtering algorithms uh, were unsuitable to the high sparsity by doing a separate test experiment that I'm not going to describe here. Um, and so these are the results when you do the recommendations from DVDs to music. So we use DVD preferences and recommend movies. Uh, so you've got the random baseline down here. And then, so we have the three graph-based algorithms there. And SEMSTEM is there at the top. There's a little overlap there in the error bars. Uh, I also confirmed that um, using uh, in R, uh, doing, a, um, doing an analysis of that in R. And so the differences are statistically significant. Um, however, if you switch the source and target domain, uh, it looks a little bit different. So what you see here, basically is that SEMSTEM is this uh, bluish one and the pinkish one is set BFS. Um, and basically the error bars overlap to such a high degree, um, also the me median, uh, of the error bars overlap the medians. And that basically means that the difference is not statistically significant. Um, there's several reasons for why this might have happened. It could be due to the size of um, the domains, it could be due to the connectedness of the domains. Um, so this basically is an, a very interesting area for future research to look at why um, different pairings uh, affect the performance differently and um, how, how that happens. Now then the third objective is to evaluate the diversity of the recommendations. Um, for that uh, we used again movie lens data because we want to compare the diversity to the collaborative filtering algorithms. So that's a single domain experiment. Um, and we use our own diversity metric because uh, DBpedia is uh, very uh, inconsistent with how the properties are applied. Um, so the diversity metric that we used is based on estimating the number of clusters in a set of items, uh, in a set of recommendations. Uh, and then what you see here basically is there's a dotted line here. Um, the y-axis shows the diversity and then over here these are all the comparison algorithms so collaborative filtering for instance and then this one here with the high range of diversities is SVD++ and then over here starting from there you have uh, the activation threshold increases and um, you can see there that the range of the diversity uh, distributions gets smaller right so um, basically down here you have less diverse recommendations they're further away, so the median there, um, so the recommendations are on average further away, whereas over here they're more diverse, so they're closer there to a high median. What's important about these results is that we had to use all the um, preferences of the users, so not just the positive ones, but also the negative ones. So what uh, this experiment shows is that the diversity of the recommendations can be tuned, however it requires using all the preferences. And then uh, the fourth uh, set of results basically is from the Linked Open Data Recommender Systems Challenge at the Extended Semantic Web Conference 2014. Um, so there, um, the, there were multiple uh, recommendation tasks there. Um, one was the diversity recommendation task where um, you need to recommend 20 books 
um, from all unrated books of a user. And um, so we were able to uh, participate in that task. The other task included, for instance, ratings, or they had, um, they had very small um, sizes for the user profiles. Um, yeah, and then um, the metrics that were used um, in this uh, challenge task were the F1 score and the interlist diversity. And so the goal to participate at this challenge was first to show that um, SEMSTEM is compar uh, has a comparable performance to its peers um, in, in the research community. And then secondly, to show that the accuracy and the diversity um, can be tuned so that they're balanced, so that there's no bias towards one of them. Um, yeah, and so then the results are here. So you see on the y-axis the F1 score um, and here the interlist diversity, and then on the uh, x-axis is the activation threshold. So it's one of the most important um, parameters of the algorithm. And um, you can see here when the activation threshold goes higher, the accuracy goes down. When the activation threshold over here goes higher, your diversity goes up. So, and then basically uh, we submitted several results to determine uh, which one gives us the best ranking because it's based on the average of the two rankings and that was for the activation threshold of 0 0.7. And yeah, so we uh, came out on third place of 12 teams which shows that uh, compared to what's happening in this research community now, um, SEMSTEM has uh, competitive performance for the single domain recommendation task. So overall the um, evaluation has shown that uh, SEMSTEM is able to provide single domain recommendations, it's able to provide cross domain recommendations, the diversity can be tuned, and finally that uh, there's no bias between accuracy and diversity, so that you can influence that as well. Now the last uh, contribution I want to talk about is the advanced prototype. Um, that's the outcome of a collaboration project with Cisco Galway. And it has uh, several goals. So um, the first one is to show the relevance of my cross-domain personalization framework for real-world industry use case, and then to show how to implement a cross-domain personalization, how to implement the cross-domain personalization framework, how to instantiate the architecture, and how to um, provide an ecosystem for sharing of user profile data. Now, the use case is uh, from the industry and it's about sharing of knowledge in enterprise. So what you need to think of there is that you have different departments, marketing, development, R&D, and they might have their own different pet um, content management systems. So the marketing guys might all be very much into microblogging so using something like Twitter. The development guys might like Wiki a lot, and maybe the R&D guys like Drupal as a content management system. Um, now, the problem there is that it's very hard to keep up with uh, what's happening in a different department if, you can't, if you're actually not using that other system. And the other problem is that it's hard to get recommendations from the other systems. So you actually need to follow somebody. You, you can't just say, I want to know what's happening in the area of databases over there in the development department. So the functional requirements coming from that use case are that um, subscriptions first need to be able to be provided, so you need to be able to subscribe to somebody. Secondly, you need to be able to filter those subscriptions. Then you need to be able to get recommendations for um, items which you're not subscribed to, from users you're not subscribed to. And finally, if you update your user interests, you want to get recommendations for older stuff that is about your new user interests. So if you add basketball, then you want to see something about last year's basketball tournament. Now, the prototype that we implemented in order to achieve that um, first has to be distributed. So that's the main thing that you can see here is that um, there are, there's the advanced connected social platform and there's more than one of those. So here's one and here's a second instance of that. These could be different systems. This could be a microblogging platform and this one here could be a wiki. And then in the middle you have the advanced server that provides the personalization because for that you need to uh, basically uh, know about the data published and all the other systems. Um, you see here uh, the components are, have the same color coding, so you've got the user interface components there, there's the personalization application logic, and then um, here the green ones are for storing data. Now in order to pro um, enable the distributed nature of this, um, we used XMPP and, and Sparkle update uh, for the payload data, so for the LEF data. 
And this basically then showed how to implement an open ecosystem in which personalization is used for data from different personalized services. So um, just to show you quickly the advanced prototype user interface, um, basically how we implemented this prototype was that um, you, you log in, you provide interests here, and then you get recommendations from, uh, so these are other tags, other concepts that you might be interested in. Here you see posts from users that you are subscribed to. Here you see posts that are recommended to you from users you're not subscribed to. And then here's other users that are similar to your current interests. So taken together, the advanced prototype shows um, that the cross-domain personalization framework that I've presented is relevant to a real-world industry use case. And um, it shows also how to actually instantiate the uh, architecture for linked open data recommender systems and uh, how to deploy the algorithm for that use case. Okay, so to conclude the presentation, I'm just going to uh, give you a quick summary of my contributions again. So first, the conceptual architecture um, describes best practices for using linked open data for recommender systems and has a strong empirical grounding. Then the cross-domain recommendation approach that at, the, at its heart has the SEMSTEM algorithm. It can provide single domain and cross-domain recommendations. It doesn't require an overlap between the two domains. It doesn't require ratings for the target domain. Um, it has a competitive performance and the diversity can be tuned. And then finally the advanced prototype um, ties that together. It's based on a real-world use case. It shows how to implement all parts of both parts of the uh, cross-domain framework, and uh, it shows how to enable an ecosystem in which uh, personalization data is shared. So now there's just two slides left, so I want, want to quickly talk about the future work. Um, basically, as you have seen in the cross-domain recommendation results, uh, the performance of the cross-domain, uh, sorry, of SEMSTEM is uh, dependent on the selection of domains and on like which direction and all these kind of things. So um, one area of future work that is very promising is to look at um, the properties of those domains, such as the connectedness, and um, to investigate how that influences the performance of the algorithm for the recommendations. Then the second area of future work is learning of weights for the different edge types. So um, all, uh, so spreading activation um, con contains already all the kind of uh, constraints that you need to take the semantics of the graph into account. And as SEMSTEM is an, um, is an extension of spreading activation, it can do the same. However, in order to do that, you need to actually find out what kind of weights the edge types would have. And that would require a form of machine learning. And that went outside of the scope of the PhD. However, that is a very interesting area of fu for future work. And then finally, the linkage data can be uh, improved and that might affect the quality of the recommendations. So the linkage data, what I mean with that, is the data that connects an item to DBpedia. Right? So if you have Harry Potter, that's what you have in your inventory, then you want a link to the Harry Potter uh, URI on DBpedia. And in my experiments, I used very uh, simple approaches to provide that linkage data. If you use more sophisticated approaches, let's say DBpedia Spotlight or research by, uh, for instance, uh, fellow colleagues in my unit, then you might be able to improve um, the recommendation results as well. And then just uh, to give a quick overview over the dissemination, so as I discussed, um, so in the top three for the diversity task at the Linked Open Data Recommender Systems Challenge, and then I've got um, uh, eight publications. So there's two book chapters, journal paper, two conference papers, workshop papers, uh, two workshop papers, and a conference poster. And the advanced website is online. Um, that concludes the presentation. Just going to switch back to the summary. And I guess I'm then open for questions.